Hi guys. Thank you for joining me tonight. This is so funny. I recorded this whole video and I realized I wasn't live. So I'm basically just going live now. Um, a few weeks ago, I... Not a few weeks ago, last week, I've had major pa panic attacks uh, for a while where I wake up and my heart's palpitating and doing all of that. And, and usually it takes me a while to calm down and all of that. But in the middle of all of this, in the middle of uh, when I was having a panic attack, instead of panicking like I usually did, um, the song Do It Again by Elevation Church came to, came to me, and after I started singing it, it, it brought me such peace that, that he can move this mountain, because he did it, he did it before, and he, He'll do it again. So, I am I just um, wanted to tell you to, when you're going through hard times, find a song to resonate with you. It doesn't matter if you can sing or not. Um, find a song that resonates with the situation. Because what it does, it, it's a weapon that can drive back demons and, and do all kinds of wonderful things. Worship is a weapon. It's a very, um, it's a useful, not only a useful weapon, it is a necessity as a believer. It opens portals that you wouldn't believe. It opens blessings that you wouldn't believe. And I remember, aside from what happened last week with my panic attack and, and what happened there, um, because I remember, aside from that, there was a time where I was feeling really overwhelmed and really stressed. and. Uh, the Lord brought this old hymn to me. He began to sing through me. He, he sang, I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe in what I can be. And all that Show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow. Never be mine. Help me today. Show me the way. One day at a time. And I think partly what what happened last week was I've been watching a lot of sermons and reading a lot of word and really getting into 
the presence of God. And I think um, that's why when I was in throes of panic last week, um, instead of all this uh, panic and fear coming at me like it did, like it has done before, um, I started to sing. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. For you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. Oh, you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I know the night won't last, your word will come to pass, my heart will sing your praise again, Jesus you're still in keep me within your love, my heart will sing your Praise again, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. That, that, those words gave me strength, pulled me out of the fear pulled me out of the panic and literally just gave me gave me something to stand on that he got me through this before and he will do it again and it's so strange because with all the pandemic has taken from all of us it's taught me a lot of lessons opened up uh, portals of revelation and stuff that I could not have, I could not have had otherwise, I believe. And basically, when you're growing, sometimes you don't realize you're growing. I was watching, uh, Rich Wilkerson, uh, the other day, and he was talking about, um, the growth um, of a person and um, he was saying that his mom used to line up his four brothers and really um, and measure their growth from year to year and sometimes you don't see that you're growing uh, you, you, they didn't see that they were growing until they were actually growing. Until, like, they actually needed it, and that's what happens sometimes. But a, a lot of people, um, were asking God to fill our wells and fill our hearts. But we're, but we are so bitter we are so angry, we are so full of negative emotions that God can't fill up the well. He wants to fill up the well. He wants to um, 
deliver us. He wants to do all of that. But we are so blocked. Our well is covered. And not only is our well covered, but on top of the covering, we have the debris and we have sky high walls that we've put um, to protect ourselves. But although we put it to protect ourselves, we're keeping the not so good people, people out, but we're keeping the necessary good godly people out. And he's saying, I need you to release the covering on the well so I can fill you up. I can't fill up a well that is covered with with not only the covering uh, that it comes with, but with debris and with leaves and whatever. He's like, I need you to let go of the debris of anger. He's like, I need you to let go of the debris of fear. He's like, I need you to let go of all these negative emotions. And tr he said, and trust that I have you. And trust that not only am I with you, but I will never let you fall. And if you, if you do fall, you'll fall right into my arms, right into my love, right into my goodness, right into my mercy. I'll, Sometimes as humans, we're so busy, we're so worried about um, falling and we're so busy worried about making mistakes that we don't let go. We don't let go because we're afraid, but there's no need to be afraid because he's right behind us um, and he, he will catch us. Have you ever seen... Um, those exercises where um uh that uh, exercise where one person stands uh behind another person and the other person uh d and the one in front stands and lets the other person catch them that's what the lord wants to do with you He's like, you're so worried about getting hurt. You're so worried about being disappointed, but, but blocking people out is also keeping people from uh, getting in. And he's saying, I want you to, I want to send the relationships that will be beneficial for you. I want to send the friendships that will be beneficial for you, but you, you're so locked up in your heart that no one can get in there. He's saying, release your heart. Give it to me. He's saying, the best way to guard your heart is to give it to me, and I will give it to you. I will tell you to, uh, I will tell you who to give it to. He won't hurt you, beloved. He loves you. People hurt you. And holding on to that anger, to that resentment, to whatever negative emotion, emotions, is not serving you anything it's only um harming you and if you want to grow in god you're saying i want to grow in god well you have to start by letting go of all these negative emotions and so you can let the good good stuff get let, let the good stuff in and you might let some bad stuff in too, but beloved, isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth, like, the chance of getting hurt? Because you know that along with that hurt will come the good stuff too. Will, will come love, will come generosity, will, will, become, will come a beneficial friendship that will benefit you for your lifetime 
he doesn't want you to stay in your own little bubble. He wants you to come out. Show, show that love. Show that love. Let that love flow. Let people see your heart. Will you chance getting hurt? Yes, but you will also chance being more loved by God and by people than you could ever imagine. And you will gain such, so much benefit to just letting your love show and letting bitterness and anger and resentment go that you, you will be a completely different person. And it may happen little by little, but Quite often, that's how resentment happens. Resentment, the resentment, and all those negative emotions don't happen all at once. You don't wake up um, in the morning and say, "Oh my gosh, I'm resentful today. I'm angry today." It happens little by little, and but the good thing about it happening little by little is you can let it go little by little too. It doesn't have to be let go all at once, but just but just lift off that well cover a, a crack and just let him fill it a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until you're overflowing with love until you're overflowing with peace, until you're overflowing with joy. Because he wants to love you. He wants you to overflow with peace, love, and joy. But with that well cover on, it can't get in. He wants to fill your well, but he can't get in, and he desperately wants to love you. He desperately wants that personal relationship with you. We often say, do you want a personal relationship with Christ? And the answer is yes. So we say a sinner's, a sinner's prayer and whatever. But what we don't ask is, does he want a personal relationship with me? And the answer is yes. He doesn't want to only have uh, for you to have a personal relationship with him, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants to know you intimately. He wants to go into the recesses of your heart and your mind and pour his love, pour his joy, pour his mercy on you. And you're worth it. I'm going to say it again. You're worth his joy. You're worth his peace. You're worth his mercy. You're worth his healing. You're worth his strength. You're worth his spirit. You're worth his wisdom. Every, everyone has done things in their life, beloved, that they're not proud of. But God doesn't disqualify us by what we've done. He's qualified us because of what we've done. We're qualified as his children, and when you're qualified as your as his child, that's all you need. You don't need people's um, uh, accolades and accommodations for you. Like he, once you give your heart, once you give him your heart. He won't break it. He won't break it at all. Um, <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm, I love Regency romances from that period, uh, from the Regency period. And one of the romances I read, instead of the guy just saying, I love you. He sent the lady a note. He said, you have my heart. Don't break it. And that's what the Lord is saying to some of you today. Um, God is saying, you have my heart. 
don't break it. Every time you cover up your will, every time you build a wall, every time you've got bitterness and anger and resentment, you're breaking the heart of God. You're, you're breaking the heart of God. And he, he's saying, you have my heart, beloved. Don't break it. I died for you to give you not only new life, but to give you my heart. He's saying, you have my heart. Don't break it. He said, we're saying, we're saying, Lord, you can have my heart. But he's saying, you can have mine too. I want to share my secrets with you. I want to reveal myself to you in a new way. But your heart's so um, closed off. Your walls are so high that I can't even penetrate them. And he's saying, let me in, because I, I need to show you more of who you are, more of who I am. And in order for me to do that, I need your heart. I want your heart. I love you. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your peace today, Lord Jesus. Enable us to give you our hearts, oh God. Um, not even just a song. Enable us to really give you our hearts. Uncover our wells, Lord. No, help us to uncover our wells so you can fill us up. Fill us up and make us whole. Um, put put spackle over the crevices of our heart that are broken and that are cracked, and heal and heal us, Lord. Uh, not spackle, grout. It's grout that you put over crevices. So, Lord. Put ground over our cre crevices. Heal, restore, and deliver us. Go down into the deep recesses of our heart. And, and, and let us know that you love us and you're here to forgive us. And you're here to restore us. And reass reassure us, God, that you won't break our hearts. That you're not like man. That you are God and you just want to give us pure love. And there is nothing that we can do, nothing that we can say, nothing that, that we can act like to make you love us more or less. You love us so intimately, infinitely, Lord God. We bless you and we praise you and thank you for our love. Thank you for your love. Oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart, oh, 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 you can have my heart, you can have my heart. Oh, oh, you can have my heart, you can have my heart, oh, oh, you can have my heart, you can have my heart, and just like growth happens little by little, freedom happens little by little as well. So even if you're struggling with giving God your heart, just do it little by little and tell him, God, I'm struggling with giving you my heart. 
Lord, I'm afraid because of how people treated me, and I'm a, I'm afraid because they say you won't treat me like that, but I'm not sure. And just give him a little, a little bit, and and it'll it'll grow some more and more and more and more. He'll take you as you are. He'll take you at the stage you are. And then you'll find yourself growing little by little. And you don't even know that you're growing little by little, but you are. You just have to take one little minuscule step. Just the faith of a mustard seed works. You don't need a lot, just a little. If you want my heart, you got it. You got it. If you want my heart, you got it, you got it, oh, oh, you can have my heart, you can have my heart. See you later, guys. Take care. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. Bye, guys. See you later.